Yo, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to Cup Check. Uh, we're here, you know, took a little little break, uh, focusing up on school, doing doing this, doing that, but we're back. It's the middle of the winter meetings. Uh, some crazy stuff is going on in the baseball world, so we, we felt it necessary to bring in a uh, lifetime Mets fan, Quentin Markle. Quentin, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? I'm glad to be here. Dude, I'm, I'm doing really good. I'm, I'm really excited to talk some baseball with you. Um, you know, there's there's a little, like, there's a little like, ooh, is, is, is Q that much of a Mets fan? You are the biggest Mets fan I know. So I wanted to bring you on to uh, just, just get your reactions. You know, a lot of a lot of stuff's changing for your team. How are you feeling? Uh, you know, in, in response to the am I a Mets fan, you know, I've I've been there through the highs and lows. You know, I've seen Jerry Familia give up postseason home runs in a wild card game. I've seen him go to the World Series. So I've been through it all. Um, I love the current direction of the team, to be honest. Um, the late season collapse last year, um, it can can get people kind of thinking the season was a failure, but I think the season was a big success. Manager of the year, Buck Walter, um, he's really a good, he's a great leader. Um, and I think Starling Marte being out in the last few weeks of the season had a lot to do with the collapse. So losing to Grom, obviously, like, as a Mets fan, it just kind of hurts your soul more than it hurts, I guess, more I'm thinking more with my heart instead of my brain so I think when you take a step back and realize yes Jacob deGrom is dominant as it gets but really didn't pitch that hasn't pitched very much um and then to bring in the the reigning AL Cy Young and just a guy with playoff experience on playoff experience like Verlander I mean it's perfect yeah I mean just a lot of things changing for the Mets here uh you know kind of going off what you said like last year being a pretty solid year for them like I would agree completely. The Mets were dominant for a while. They had a stretch where they were really looking like the best team in baseball. I mean, we saw Alonzo kind of like clear up any doubt that that he wasn't that guy. Like he he came out and had the best average of his career. I'm pretty sure um, powers there. And and we saw uh, Lindor kind of settle in as a Met. You know, there was a little a little beef between the Mets fans and Lindor. I feel like, and uh, I feel like Lindor really showed him that he he was worth that contract. I'm not gonna say that I think he is, but I mean, he, he came out and played really good, plays good defense, hit good this year. And we also saw the emergence of just the Mets superstar, Edwin Diaz, just having like one of the most dominant, most memorable seasons a relief pitcher has had in who knows how long. Yeah. No, I think starting with Alonzo, I think, I think Pete really loves being the, loves being the face of the Mets. Um, he's somebody that he's marketable. He's personable. Um, he started the whole LFGM thing when they were good a few years ago. Um, so any, another homegrown star. Um, I think that's what you're going to find when you're evaluating the Mets um, for last year in this upcoming season is they've got a lot of homegrown talent as, lo- as well as the people that Steve Cohen is bringing in with the big money he has. Yeah. Uh, Steve Cohen is not afraid to spend money. Um, do you just just take me through your mindset? Like obviously uh the DeGrom news broke before the Verlander news. So uh when you saw that that just heartbreaking DeGrom to, to the Rangers on Instagram or how, how did you find out what happened there? Uh honestly, so my whole group chat from home knows I'm a huge Mets fan. Um, so you know, I'm just playing COD one night. Um and I get on my phone, I see a text, and bam, there it is. It's the Jeff uh, Jeff Passon tweet that DeGrom has signed with the Rangers and to be honest my heart sank a little bit um there's no there's no words that can describe the feeling of one of the of one of your favorite players leaving your team um Marcus Stroman's one of my personal favorite players so when he left the Mets I was also just devastated so yeah, I mean, yeah at the end of the day it's a business and you got to trust that you would rather have somebody who is buying in and wants to play for your team than somebody who's going to leave at the end of the day. Yeah, and DeGrom was the the last piece of that just uh, OG Mets pitching core, like Zach Wheeler, uh, Matt Harvey, you know, just just some really, really good pitchers to come from uh, like the late 20, uh, 2010s Mets and DeGrom just, just being uh, the best of all of them and, and the last one to stick around, but – when you see that contract, five years, 185 mil, um, you know, potential for a lot more with incentives. Um, can you can you blame the guy? Like that that is money that was not being thrown around. Um, I feel like I, I don't think other teams were throwing that kind of money around at him. No, and 
you know, he didn't give the Mets a chance to counter, um, according to reports, which I think is disappointing. But at the end of the day, that hurts. That it hurts. Does, it does hurt. But at the end of the day, he did what he thought was best for him. Um, you know, he's been through a lot with the Mets. You know, when back when Lucas Duda was starting at, at first, and you know, all these guys that nobody like. Quintanilla was playing second base, all these no names. He would twirl eight, like one hit innings and get the loss. So, you know, it's just a lot of stuff like that. He's been through a lot. A change of scenery can never hurt. And with all the money that they threw at him, good for him. Yeah. But on the positive note, uh, you know, being that Mets fan, you know, going through a day or two of pain while losing to Grom, what, what do the Mets do? They just go out and shock the world and say, you know what, we're losing. One of the best pitchers in baseball, we're going to go out and buy one of the other best pitchers in baseball. So Justin Verlander coming in, two years, vesting option for a third, uh, 86 mil over those two years. Q, what was your reaction? How did you find out what, what happened? You know, I'm absolutely stoked. And I've got a lot of, like, post notifications on for Mets, Mets news. Um, and this one I actually saw from Twitter again. And uh, I just couldn't be more happy with this move. I mean, a proven winner a proven clubhouse guy, a guy that you can count on in a game seven of a world series. I mean, this, I mean, I, I get the concerns about his age. I do, but he has proven that he can continually pitch into his upper thirties and 40 and early forties. Um, his fastball was still what? 97 last year. I yeah, mean, exactly. He's, he's still got it coming off TJ. Um, I'm super stoked for the move. Oh, yeah, I, I watched a lot of Verlander's uh, starts last year. I had him on fantasy. Very low ERA guy last year. It's definitely what uh, won him the bid at Cy Young. Um, I will say, watching some of his starts, it was kind of like certain nights he just had, like, his, like, uh, younger, more explosive stuff that was just getting swing and misses. And then other nights it was like he got on strike at only, like, three to four, kind of pitched a little more contact. But – uh, just being able to uh, compete and succeed no matter what age, no matter how old you are, it's just just really impressive and a testament to the fact that Verlander is one of the best pitchers of all time. Uh, I think it's safe to say that. And another underrated thing he's going to be bringing to the Mets, Kate Upton. She's going to be in the stands. That's that's a game changer. Good for, that's a, that is a game morale. changer. Good for morale. It really is. It really is. You know, Pete might hit an extra home run, you know, just because Kate's there. You know, it's you just, just how it out. is. You never, never know. know. Pete, I know Pete I'd might be break the NL record in front of Kate Upton. I would, I would think so. You'd probably uh, throw an just, in front of her. Exactly, and you know, just another uh, shout out to her Twitter presence. I think that's one of the goaded tweets <laughs> when uh, 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 when Verlander lost the sign to Rick Porcello, and she said something like, "I thought he was the only one able to that was supposed to be able to f me." So, uh, just a lot of baseball feel from Kate Upton. <laughs> Great feel uh, from head, Great wide. Heading to the Mets. Heading to the Mets. Uh, Q, who do you expect to be better over the next two years? You know, for me, I think it all depends on health. Um, it's It would be easy to give a hot take and say I think Verlander's going to be better, but DeGrom, the most dominant pitcher in the game, went healthy, obviously. Fastball up to 102 with a 94-mile-hour slider. Give me a break. The guy's the best. Stays healthy. He'll win a Cy Young. Yeah, hard to disagree with that. Uh, DeGrom went healthy, clearly the best pitcher in baseball, but – if we're being realistic, Verlander is probably a little bit of a safer option, you know, coming off Tommy John. Um, he's fresh, you know, he's got that new arm, uh, just one Cy Young, got a lot of momentum rolling his way. I'm sure it'll be a little bit of adjustment moving into the big city, but I expect Verlander to handle that. Now, um, if both are staying healthy, if we're saying like just both players are going to be healthy for the, the length of the two years, I'm taking to the ground. But otherwise, hard to bet against Verlander, uh, even even as old age. So Q, finishing off our episode today, uh, I know this one was uh, a pretty quick one. Um, are there any other moves you're thinking the Mets might be making here at the end uh, uh, as we move to the end of the winter meetings? Yeah, so I'm one thing that I'm really interested in is I'm really interested in what they're going to do in the outfield. Um, outfield and then that third to fourth starting pitcher. Um, so when you look at the outfield, Brandon Nimmo is an uh, unrestricted free agent. Um, I don't know. I personally, like, homegrown kid like Brandon Nemo. He's been with the Mets his whole career. I love that dude. I love watching him play. He's an awesome leadoff hitter. He's everything you could want from your leadoff guy and center fielder. Um, really improved his glove. And I think that he really deserves the money he's going to get on the market. But getting Andrew Benintendi for similar value, 
I think could be a much better move for the Mets, sliding Marte to center and putting Benintendi in left with Canna and right. Uh, I don't. I really don't think you can go go wrong with that. Sure, sure, of course. But um, well, you're maybe more excited about the outfield. I'm really excited about the catcher position uh, moving forward for next year. Q, what is your um, what are your thoughts on Al- on Alvarez? What do you what do you think is going to happen there? Uh, I'm so excited to see him get an off season. You know, knowing that he's going to be the guy. You know, I've spent way. I mean, it has been well. I think two, three years with James McCann. It's been two years too long with James McCann. I mean, he is horrible. And, you know, sure, you might be taking a little step back on defense with Francisco Alvarez, but that'll come. That'll come with time. The bat is just generational from a catcher. Um, just the power and it, honestly, the raw power and hit tool from him are unbelievable. Uh, he got yeah, rushed well. up a little, got rushed up a little bit last year. Um, yeah, he definitely did. He came up at the very end, right? Yeah, the last. He came up against the Yankees, I think, against the Yankees. I got you. I got a, I got a stat line pulled up here. Right. Um, only 12 ABs in the MLB, but really excited to see of those 12 ABs. Only two hits, so, you know, maybe not, like, the craziest start, but at the same time not enough sample size to really give him credit or discredit. But the two hits he had, both extra base hits, so uh, one of them being a home run, so we have to assume high exit velos. Uh, that's just kind of stuff that Alvarez is going to bring. Uh, just another really dynamic bat entering that Mets lineup next year. Yeah. That, uh, Don't forget about Brett Beatty. Don't forget about Brett, Brett Beatty. I agree. Brett Beatty also very underrated. Uh, very last thing I want to touch on, uh, you know, being that that Mets fan, you got that rivalry with the Yankees. Yeah. How stoked would you be for Judge to leave? Like, where where are you? What are you wanting to happen there? You know, to be honest, I hate the Yankees more than I think any team in sports. I know a lot of obnoxious Yankee fans in my life. Um, and I think Aaron judge leaving would just be the best thing ever. I would laugh. Uh, I would prefer it obviously not to be a team in the NL that the Mets are going to play a lot, but I really don't think that I, I'd rather see him in San Francisco than New York. I, I think, I think New York is just a thing of the, I think the New York Yankees are a thing of the past. Well, hot take there. Yankees yep. are done for You're not seeing any, any comeback from Stanton and any, any anything from the Yankees next year? Uh, you know, I just I think that they're I think they're kind of handcuffed with Garrett Cole's contract. He's a I think he is a really good number two at this point of his career. Respect. All right. Well, that's gonna do it for today's episode here on Cup Check. Uh, we're back, so stay tuned. Uh, you know, turn on that notification button because we're gonna be trying to pump out some more content as uh, the winter meetings come to an end. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to check out the links in the bio, Instagram, TikTok, all that. And just a, a big thank you to Quentin for coming on, sharing his Mets expertise. And uh, if, if you like to have Q here on the show, make sure to make sure to blow it up and we'll have to run it back with you again, Q. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Thank you all for watching. Thank you.